In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion here at St Margaret Lothbury. Welcome wherever you are when you're watching and joining in this service. It's wonderful that some of you write each week and say uh, that you have been joining in in different ways. And I hope today that the Holy Spirit of God will bless us as we share together in this service. So let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us pray. Let thy merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of thy humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions. Make them to ask such things as shall please thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the first epistle of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians at chapter 12 and beginning at the first verse. Concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You, ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers gifts of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame Spirit, dividing to every man severally, as he will. Here endeth the epistle. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the 41st verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And when Jesus was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, 
because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. And Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is the house of prayer, for ye have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. When life is busy, whether it's busy at work or busy outside work, we can so often focus on responding to the demands of the moment that it's only later we realise we failed just to pause and to pray, albeit briefly. Or at least, that's true to me. It may not be true of you. In our Gospel reading today, it's clear that the Lord Jesus' contemporaries had often done the same thing. By finding a working compromise with the Roman occupying power, They'd brokered an uneasy peace which allowed them to co coexist and even have the feeling of security. The only casualty was that God had been sidelined. They clearly hadn't stopped and prayed and listened. And that was recorded, that is reflected in what the Lord Jesus highlighted later in that reading. If only thou hadst known, at least in this thy day, the things that belong unto thy peace. If only you'd known, and you didn't know because you hadn't stopped, you hadn't paused, you hadn't asked my heavenly father and your heavenly father, and you'd just gone ahead and done the thing that you thought was right. He turned his contemporaries and thought, only you prayed as you know how to pray. And although their situation was much more dramatic than ours will hopefully ever be, I and probably you can often look back on times when we have made exactly the same mistake. When we said or done something, we've later regretted. Made decisions that sometime later we wish we hadn't actually made. And then as we'd look, thought about it, we realised actually we'd never stopped and we never prayed. That's why this week's collect or special prayer is such an encouragement. It begins, let thy merciful ears be open to the prayers of thy humble servants. 
even as we pray it on this week, year by year, we're reminding ourselves of God's character and his attitude to us. He's merciful. That's the quality that is most in evidence when he hears our prayers. His instinct isn't to criticize us for what we fail to do or condemn us for our mistakes. Instead, he encourages us, sympathizes with us, understands us, understands our situations, and in spite of everything, he constantly wants to help us. The prayer reminds us that because of Jesus, he is always available to us. Whenever we pray, he is ready to hear. And we need to remember that amazingly generous attitude and perhaps get into the habit of checking in with him in prayer more often than we might instinctively do. And so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. Amen. I wash my hands in innocence of him, so when I go to the water of the Lord. Prayer to the kiss of the night, and the of wash me, and I shall be white in the snow. May these hands that touch holy things be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In our prayers today, we remember the people of Belarusia. We pray for our own nation and our own government. For all who received A-level results last week and those awaiting GCSE results on Thursday of this week. We pray for Rydal and Kevin and Sonia, for David, and for Yvonne's son. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. 
and all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, giving thanks particularly today for Judith Pleasance's mother, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and receive this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right, meet and right, so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, 
and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Body of Christ. Blood of Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Um.
Go before us, O Lord, in all our doings with thy most gracious favour, and further us with thy continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name, and finally by thy mercy obtain everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.